Welcome. Today we are going to explore life in the city of Midland in the late 1800s. So although we're not able to visit our Bradley home in person, we've set up these exciting scenes around our auditorium lobby that will give you a taste of what life was like in their home. So the Bradleys built their house in 1874, and it was a husband and wife and their little girl that lived there. Now, houses in Midland, if you think about downtown Midland and what it looks like today, it looked kind of similar. There were houses on a street that were lined up side by side. They didn't have huge pieces of property, but they did have some space to plant a small garden. So let's look at this new photo of the Bradley home. What do you notice? What does the house look like? Is it colorful or is it dull? Let's take a moment to think about what we see. All right, now let's zoom back in time and take a look at this older photo of the Bradley home. This is where it originally sat. If you ever get the chance to walk past it today, that's not its original location. It was actually located downtown by St. Bridget's Church. And later it transformed from a family home into a home that was used by the parish. So what do you notice about the yard? Now, this house was painted. So the people who built this house would have purchased lumber at a local mill. It would already be in the smooth planks you see. And then they would have had builders and even maybe an architect design it and then build it. The house would have been painted so you would have seen many different colors. This is very different from the homes that you would have seen in a more rural environment. Since they had some extra resources available and since they were purchasing many of the things that they use, sometimes homes in the city were much more elaborate than those you would see in a more rural area. Now, if you already visited the root cellar at Chippewa Nature Center or you're going to visit it soon on their video, you'll notice that they had many structures and many buildings. The Bradleys only would have had one, maybe two structures on their property. Now, as you're going to see, we're gonna look at two rooms today. Each of the rooms in the Bradley home would have had their own function or use. So right now, we are standing in the Bradley's kitchen. This would have had one particular use. Unlike more rural homes, where there were many uses in a given room. All right, so let's take a look around this kitchen. What do we notice around here? I've pulled out some fun items. We have tins. This tin says cocoa, mm, it's chocolate. Baking powder. And there's a lot of these glass jars that have different food items inside. Do you think the Bradleys would have grown these items or made these items in their own property? No, they would have bought them from a general store. So all of these things would have been purchased at a nearby store. What's really neat is Mr. Bradley actually owned a general store. So some of these items might even have come from his own store. You also may notice this older looking oven and stove. So they did have stoves and ovens like we have today. But this one would have taken much longer to heat up. You would have had to put a fuel source inside and it would have slowly heated. It would have also stayed hot for a long time and it would have been very warm to the touch. So you wouldn't have wanted to have children playing around in the kitchen too much. So now that we've kind of explored the oven and we've explored some of these products, what about cold items? What would they have done with things that needed to be refrigerated? They did not have refrigerators like we have today. They had something called the ice box. Now this would have sat in their kitchen and it would have had a little card, just kind of similar to this one. And so this card would have gone in the window of the home and it would have let somebody know, whoever was delivering the ice, that they needed more ice. Ice would have been placed, a big block of it, in this top part, 
and it would have sat here. And then this is the neatest part down here is where all of the food would have been stored. So it kind of looks like your refrigerator today, but it relied on ice. So as soon as that ice melted, your food inside of your refrigerator or your ice box would have started to warm up. This is very different from what you may see in a rural environment or on a farm. The last thing I want to point out is that you may not see a sink in this kitchen. Some homes had a pump nearby or some may have had a pump indoors and you would have had to pump your water and carry it inside if you wanted to cook anything or you wanted to take a bath or you wanted a drink of water. So it's a bit different from what we have in our homes today. We have now entered the Bradley's parlor. So this would have been a space that you would have come to enjoy yourself, to relax and to have some entertainment. One thing I like to point out are these chairs. So you notice that a lot of the chairs in these spaces do not have arms on them. And that is because during the Bradley's time when you were living in the city, you would have worn many layers of clothing. The women would have had large skirts and even the kids would have worn up to six layers of clothing. This is much different from what we saw in more rural settings. A lot of the people in those settings had to work really hard, right? They had to dig in the earth or build. Here they could kind of just relax. So you'd see lots of layers of clothing. They wouldn't necessarily make their own clothing. They would go to the general store. They would buy their fabric for their clothes. And then they would sometimes hire a seamstress who would make the clothes for them. So if you go into old homes or you see old furniture and the seats are lower to the ground or they don't have arms, it's because of all of these layers of fancy clothing. All right, so let's take a closer look at all of the smaller items that are in this room. This would have been the receiving parlor or the formal parlor in the house. Like we mentioned before, each room would have its own function. And this room was really designed for people to enjoy and have fun and entertain. So you'll see a lot of instruments in this space. You'll also see a phonograph. And so this is the large part that would have attached to the phonograph and it would amplify the sound. It's kind of like an older record player. And these were the little records that would be inserted into this machine to play music. So imagine lively music playing, people gathering. Now what about the kids? The kids would have learned how to play instruments. They also would have had trading cards, toys, and books. They would even have a stereoscope that they could use to get views from other parts of the country and even other parts of the world. It's something you would have also found on the farm or in more rural environments. So I want to thank you for joining us and taking a look at life in the late 1800s with the Bradleys. Now the Bradleys lived in a city so they may have had items that we consider more ornate or items that seem a little bit fancier today. However, they had to buy all of these items, unlike those living in rural environments who could grow their own crops, they could have their own sources of meat. These people had to rely on others. They had to go to the general store. All of these items would have been purchased at the store. They would have gone to a seamstress to make their clothes. They would have had to purchase all of the lumber to build their home from a local mill yard. It wasn't like the more rural environments. So I hope that you enjoyed taking a peek back in early Midland life, and we hope to see you at the center soon.